All right, guys, it's Mrs. Musical Pants here, and today I will show you how to do some basic audio editing in Final Cut Pro. I already imported two videos from myself singing. So the first thing I normally do for all my singers, I assign a role. So I right click on the track and I go to assign audio roles and I added the one that says singing and music. So you can just go to edit roles if you want to do that. And then in music, I just clicked sub role and then you just apply that. Here we go. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have audio meters on my screen just so I can see the recording if it's maybe exceeding a certain threshold in um, the volume. So I to, to, to do that, I'm going to go to Window and then I'm going to go to Show in Workspace and I'm going to click Audio Meters. Now you can play around with your workspace a lot. You can go to window and then you can show other things, the browser or all other things. So, um, but I like to have some things hidden because otherwise it's just too cramped. All right. The next thing I'm going to do with this audio that I have here now from my video is I'm going to do analysis. So I'm going to click on top here. So I click on the volume button or this little speaker and I just do audio analysis, which is kind of just automatically analyzes your audio and does a couple of things. So for mine, it was noise removal. It removed a little bit. So as you're playing your track, you can actually move this cursor around and see if you like it and how much you like it. Now you will notice that my audio meters are showing that the audio is around minus five, which is actually nice. You usually want your audio meter to be between minus six to zero decibels on kind of like the louder pitches. All right. The next thing I do with audio for my um, virtual choir recording, I start applying some effects. So right now they don't show here. So I'm going to click on this window to little windows. And first effect that I'm going to apply is the equalizer. So I just go to EQ here. I can also just go to all effects and just click here, channel EQ, and it's going to find it. For me to apply the effect, click drag and drop. And now I can see on the side here that my effect was applied. Um, what the uh, channel EQ does is actually it gets rid of some frequencies that are not very pleasant to our ears. Um, so that's that's a nice thing to do. And then what I'm, the next thing I'm going to do is actually change right now. It's called it's the preset is set up to default. I'm going to click on it and I scroll down to voice and I do choir EQ. So that's already preset for you. So you re really don't need to do much. You will notice that my audio was recorded as a stereo. Some of your singers might have it as a mono here. What I then do, I'm going to bring it to um, a center. Um, so it just has a little bit more of a centralized sound instead of just a mono, especially when you're mixing it all together. All right. The next thing that you can do, I normally don't do. Um, and that really is if you get maybe an audio from your singer that is just really poorly recorded, you can do some compression. And what the compression does is it reduces the sounds that ex exceed a certain uh, threshold level. Um, it fixes the dynamics and it also increases just the overall volume of of the audio. So if I try and do that here, I can just go again, search for it, compression. So it's going to be right here, compressor, I do the same thing. Now you will notice right away that all my levels, my volume is quite a bit higher. So when I play this, you see that it's, it's still okay though, right? So what I can do with 
compressors couple of things. I find it right here and I click on this um, advanced effect editor. There's a couple of things that um, are important for compression if you're going to go into it. Um, the first thing that's kind of, like I said earlier, it's nice for these little, little levels on the side to be between six and zero, which is kind of like ideal. The first thing that's important is the threshold and that actually just says when it's going to start compressing. So right now the threshold is set up to minus 20 decibels, which I'm, when I'm playing, it, it barely ever needs to start compressing. So I can actually put my threshold a little bit higher. Maybe I can put it to like minus five. So now it's, it needs to compress and work a little bit harder. So the next thing is knee. Knee actually means how much compression would be done. So here it's set up to one. I would normally set up to 0 0.5, 0 0.4 just so it's not over compressed and um, over edited. And then another thing is the gain. Um, the gain is actually the loudness of the voice. So if I change the gain, you will notice that if I move it further up, you see how the levels here start getting red, which we never want. We always want them to be green. So I'm just gonna move it back to where it was because that was actually a nice level for it. And that's kind of like the basic audio editing that I do um, for all my singers. I really don't do much of anything else. If you wanna change just the general volume and just go in a really easy way, which sometimes can be a little bit complicated, you can change just the volume, which is okay. Um, now you will notice that I have two clips here and the other one is not visible right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press V key and now it becomes visible. So anytime you want to make something invisible, just press V. I can do this for both of them. And if I want to select more, I can just drag or I can just go and press command A and I'm just going to press V. So now they're both invisible. Now what I can do now, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about this more in the next video, but I'm just going to show you how to match the two videos together. So the first thing I want to do is add a marker to add a marker. I just move my cursor and then I press now they're both highlighted now. So what would happen is I would add the marker to the last one that I clicked. I can just delete and right click delete. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, there we go. It's highlighted now. I move in, add M and I'm going to add a marker to my second one as well. Now it's not highlighted yet. So I need to do that and M. Now you will notice that I have in both of these audios, I have a big spike in, in the recording. What I did with all my singers is I would ask them in the beginning to clap with me. So I would make a recording. All right, guys, um, I'm going to count to three and then we're going to clap together. And I would say, are you ready? One, two, three, clap. So they would clap together with me. So the reason I did that is because it's very, very easy then to align the audio recordings. So the way I do this, I just move my second clip and now this yellow line appears. If this yellow line doesn't appear, it's very possible that your snapping is not on. So if you, that's not on, just go to view and check that out. So it's snapping, it should be on. So I align in and I just match the clips in audio. That was it for today. In my next video, I will show you how to mix and edit audio from all the singers in your choir. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching and please don't forget to like, share and subscribe.